I'm RJ Nestor, business and executive coach, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about commands in smart blocks. Now, commands are what set the smart blocks, which are a part of Rome 42, apart from the native Rome templates. Commands allow you to perform actions within those workflows. So uh, that, that allows you to insert variables or do certain logic, uh, work with dates and things like that in ways that uh, are not allowed by the Rome templates. There are other, uh, you know, reasons you might use templates versus smart blocks, which I cover in another ver uh, another video that you can find linked down in the description. Uh, but uh, this is the commands are what allow smart blocks to be more dynamic than templates in that way. So do remember, you do have to have Rome 42 installed to use smart blocks. I have a link to that video also down in the description so you can learn how to install that if you don't know how. So to dive into the basics of smart block commands, commands have to be within a smart block to do anything. So you can certainly have the command format typed anywhere, uh, but they're not going to, nothing's going to happen because they have to live in smart blocks workflows. Uh, and then they perform those actions when the workflows run. So they don't remain quote unquote dynamic after the workflows have run. They don't update later. Um, but when you run that workflow, anything that you have defined within that as a variable or some sort of uh, logic uh, or, or whatever else will, will occur during the run of that workflow. Uh, commands are also, uh, just so you recognize what they look like, they are wrapped in angle brackets, by which I mean the less and greater than signs, plus a percentage symbol. It looks just like this. You have that less than sign, the uh, per percentage, and then you have an all caps name of the command, then the percentage symbol, and uh, the greater than sign. So some commands will take additional information as parameters, uh, some of them don't. Um, if they do require the additional info, the command name will have a colon after it. So you'd see like command and then a colon after it. Um, I don't want you to worry too much about parameters. I'm just covering the basics right now. Um, the nice part about each of these commands is that they will let you know um, what parameters it, it requires or doesn't require in a couple of different ways. Um, one way is you can look at the smart blocks documentation at room42.com. Uh, which is the uh, graph, the public Rome graph that Rome Hacker maintains for and about Rome 42. And that is very well organized, and it goes into detail about what commands there are and how you can use them. Um, also, when you choose a command from the drop-down menu, a pop-up will tell you how to use them too. And so I don't have to uh, fiddle a little bit here to show you this, but if you type, I don't know why I capitalized that, if you type the JJ to start smart blocks, and if you then hit less than and percentage, you'll see that you can you have a look at what these commands are. Uh, if I were to say choose cursor from the list here, there's going to be a little pop-up, and I have to move my face here so you can see it. There's a little pop-up that says what it is and how it works, and each of those does uh, works like that. So it's in the lower right-hand corner, which is why I had to move my head to show you. So you can read about the commands at, at uh, Rome42.com, and I highly recommend you do because there's a lot of great information there if you're not sure about how something works. Uh, but they do also give you sort of a, the, a brief understanding of what they do when you go to use them. Speaking of that cursor uh, command, uh, just to sort of demonstrate the basics of commands, I'm going to use two simple ones here, cursor and focus on block, to give you an understanding of how you can make good use of commands in your workflows. So first of all, these two commands are both about determining where you will be when the smart block finishes running. Cursor will leave your nice little blinking cursor at the specified location. So wherever you put the cursor command, that's where the cursor will be when the smart block ends. Focus on block behaves the same as native roam the focus on block function. So it zooms in on the block where you call the command. I could, for instance, by clicking on this, this bullet, zoom us in on the block that we're currently uh, talking about. That's what focus on block does as a smart block command as well, uh, which means you can use these individually. You don't have to use them both together, but if you do use them together, they're especially powerful, <laughs> provided you leave the cursor in the block you focused on. Uh, so you obviously, if you want to create a workflow that 
that gives you a whole bunch of uh, uh, of material that you can work with and you want the cursor to be waiting in a specific spot for you to enter specific information and you'd like all the clutter gone you'd like to be focused on that block if you have focus on block and cursor in the same block of the workflow that's where you'll be focused and that's where your cursor will be when the workflow finishes running so have a look here at how that works i created a smart block called cursor and focus on block demo in this one i just used some blank text here and then i gave you one uh, an indented place it says here's where the cursor will be and the command cursor waiting for us so this is very very simple i, I put it in an indented block just so you could see it, it's a little bit uh, you know it'll go wherever you want it to go if i were to run this block cursor and focus on block demo you notice it runs all of that it prints cursor to begin with and then when the block ends it puts the cursor right where I wanted it right in that spot there now if I wanted to focus on this block so that it would then be focused in here when we're done I'll hit focus on block and if you wanted to uh, get it to uh, show you the commands you can hit JJ first and then that will give you the option. In fact, I'll just show you that here so you can see how that works. If I were to hit JJ and then start typing uh, the things for focus on block, I can call it up that way uh, in case I don't remember what the, you know, the actual words are, something like that. And the JJ will disappear and I do get a little pop up in the lower corner there showing me what that is. Um, so now I've changed it. So this show will focus on that block as well. So when I run it again here, the cursor and focus on block demo. Now the cursor shows up right where it's supposed to, and we're also zoomed in on that block. So that's what the focus on block does. And I'm going to back out to the my outline again here, but just do remember, um, adding focus on block brought us into focus on this block right here. That's where we that's where we left and of course the cursor stayed in the same place as we had it before so in summary of all of this in the general smart block commands they add variables logic other actions to make your workflow more dynamic uh, they only work within smart blocks workflows they won't just work any old place in your graph and of course they only work while the smart blocks are running when you call them um, they're defined by angle brackets and percentage signs, and you can learn more about any individual command in the smart blocks docs on room42.com. Uh, and then, of course, cursor and focus on block make it easier to use your workflows after the smart block runs by putting your focus and your cursor in the right place, wherever you'd want it. So that's how these work. In the next video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about date related commands and how smart blocks work with dates. One last little thing, I have a course called Your Road to Rome. If you like my style of teaching Rome or smart blocks concepts, check out my courses, Your Road to Rome. I also have one on powerful task management in Rome research. Um, now, neither of those courses currently feature automations uh, like smart blocks or templates, uh, simply because both courses were created before either of those came out. But I do want to let you know that down the road in a few weeks, March, uh, maybe April, I'm going to be releasing version two of those courses and any version one buyer also gets version two as a free upgrade. Um, that's what it means to be a version one buyer with lifetime access. At least that's what it means to me. So uh, if this is something, if, if you like the way I teach and you think I could be helpful in uh, you learning a bit more about Rome, uh, there is an option there to go and check out my course. I hope this is helpful for you and I'll see you in the next video.